Hope you're enjoying the music right now on Gold FM. Only the classic hits, especially if you're spending your time at home or around the office. I certainly hope you're taking it easy and enjoying the music coming your way. Well, I got a whole lot more to keep you moving and to keep you going right up until you uh, reach lock off time. I'm Kara. Join me every weekday from 2 to 7 on the ride, only on Gold FM. जहाँ हो प्यार का बसेरा और रिश्तों की खुशबू वो है आपका अपना घर संसार ज्वाइन बी ऑन घर संसार मंडे टू फ्राइडे नाइन एम टू ट्वेल्व पी एम ओनली ऑन रेडियो फीजी टू Tonight, having only one constituency will ensure all Fijians are given equal attention, says Attorney General. Methodist church ministers told to stop drinking Yangona and smoking cigarettes, and high costs blamed for lack of investment in the Northern Division. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate, and you're watching FBC News. Having just one constituency for next year's elections will ensure equal attention is paid to every Fijian. This was the message from the Attorney General Aisai Kayum on Gold FM's talkback show Speak Your Mind today. Roland Karoy reports. After next year's elections, there won't be any representative speaking for a particular group of people. Oh, you know, as we had Lao open, Ba open, whatever it may be. The, the, the question might arise there, Mr. Said Kayum, is someone may, may say, you know, in the old constitution, we had our rep, you know, representing us. How will our voices be heard in parliament sure. with this one constituency? All 50 of them will be a rep. And I think that's the best way to describe it. Because previously, you had only one person. Mm. That person can't be found, and they're spending too much time in Suva, in a nightclub, or wherever it is. You can't get to that person. Now, every single member of parliament will be your rep. Ayaz Said Kayum says the new electoral system also holds all 50 parliamentarians accountable to every Fijian. If I was, for example, open, uh, uh, voted in from Lotoka open, I really do not care about what is happening in Vanuolivu. Now, the, if you're a member and you've originally come from Lotoka, you live in Lotoka and you voted in, you have to be concerned about what's happening in Dikumbia. Your political party needs to ensure that its policy is all geared towards everybody in Fiji. Political parties can field up to 50 candidates and the whole country, or eligible voters at least, get to choose which 50 get a seat in parliament. But at the moment there's an idea, you have a board up there when you go into the uh, in the polling booth, you basically just give one vote. You choose whoever you want. Now, obviously that person comes from a political party. So when they count the individual votes, they also then tally it across the political party itself. How we vote and what procedures to be followed will be made public soon with a massive education drive also in the pipeline. The government is also adamant that elections will happen in one day, no later than 30th September 2014. Roland Koroy, FBC News. All decrees put in place by the Mbani Marama government will continue to apply and their validity cannot be challenged. However, Attorney General Aisai Kayum explains once Parliament sits, it will be up to elected leaders to decide what happens to the decrees. But once Parliament sits, the new Parliament can do as it wills. Under the, un under the, under the confines of the Constitution, of course. Right, right. But as far as the decrees are concerned, they can completely get rid of a decree. They can amend a decree. They can repeal a decree. Uh, they can build upon a decree. That's the prerogative. And the reason why it's the prerogative is because all Fijians would have voted for that government. The Attorney General also clarified that any decision made before elections next year can't be challenged. For example, if a person has been sentenced to prison under the domestic violence decree today, or this year, or before the first sitting of parliament, they can't go back and say, just because we've got rid of it now, you know, post uh, 30 September 2014, let's pay this guy compensation. Or, you know, because we sent him to prison. They can't do that. They, you can't challenge any of those decisions. The new president of the Methodist Church says he has clearly mapped out how he will run the church for the next three years. Reverend Tuikila Kila Wangairatu was speaking at the annual general meeting at the Centenary Church in Suva this morning. Apisalomidoka with the details. 
Your body is the temple of God and it must not be abused. Reverend Wangai Ratu showed his disappointment at excessive consumption of Yangona by church ministers, which he says has affected their performance. I direct you all church ministers, from today, you must stop smoking. It is not healthy and not holy. He also asked his ministers if they can't control themselves from drinking too much kava, how will they tend to God's flock? I also direct all church ministers that there will be no more drinking of Yangona at all church ministers' residence, and I advise you not to leave your residence to drink Yangona elsewhere. You should only drink Yangona during traditional occasions and only a maximum of three bowls. The church president has also announced that he will visit church departments around Fiji and expects to find the highest standards. After the Mboshi Committee, I will be visiting all church departments. If I see any church minister not looking fit to spread the word of God, I will terminate the minister. And if the Mboshi Committee will want to remove me from my presidency, it is up to you. But I will implement what God has directed me to do. Church ministers have also been urged to act godly, think godly, and live godly to save more lives. The Moscoviti will discuss the review of the church constitution tomorrow. Apisola Mevoka, FBC News. The Land Transport Authority has planned a major overhaul of the policies governing public service vehicle licensing. Mika Longa reports the authority today tabled its plan before the LTA board for endorsement. There are lots of complaints they're saying about taxi drivers and rural drivers, bad drivers. The policy reform for groups 3, 4 and 5 PSV drivers is overdue and has been found to be causing complaints from the travelling public. What we have on the road right now is something that was there for some time back, but uh, we, we try uh, to get, move these changes over, we try to crack the mindset of uh, the drivers, we try to uh, make them understand that it is a job, it is a profession. LTA's first move is to improve the minimum qualifications requirements for PSV drivers, proposing a Form 6 bus. Some believe that to drive a bus or to drive a taxi, there is a job you'll end up when you cannot find any, more, any job anywhere. It's also recommended that the minimum age of PSV license holders be increased from 21 to 23. The driving test requirements are likely to have additional components while a separate defensive driving course will also be drafted. We want to see that they will also have to do uh, customer service uh, uh, training. Uh, they will have to do uh, some uh, training on uh, the fire drill and uh, of course on the first aid. How many things should be inside here? Uh, it should be about three or four things. See, at the back, should do, yeah, should be 11 things inside. Oh, okay. The LTA CEO adds PSV drivers also need to be able to detect any malfunctions in the vehicle. We, we believe that this is a very, very important uh, part. But where is your taxi side? It is open. It. I think it can, uh, no, you cannot be running on the road with the LTA there and uh, you don't have the proper signage on top. The LTA describes this initiative as a revolutionary exercise to bring about better service, better upskilling and better training for those who are intending and those who are already servicing the travelling public. Nikolonga, FBC News. Coming up, new code of conduct and the pipeline for real estate agents. Nisambulo binaka, oya wone kamanalangi, oni nandorungu viyao, maina viwa kina ruwe na visinga, maina moni iti kina bonga rumbu, kena Radio Fiji 1 and Doma Ibiti bongani viya nyanu. Nama katalengana vengo na sasi viya nye na tina kaloko na vimbongi ni buke lulu. Kena vima mani walu na vimbongi ni bakarowai, maina mbuza ni walu, ninge inamaka. Aki shadi hone wali hai. Panch panch bachche honge. Panch panch. Panch panch. Hi, I am Aki Saheli Venu. Listen to me, I am at 6 o'clock from 9 to 12 o'clock. Welcome back. You're watching FBC News. A 32-year-old farmer of Sambeto Nandi charged with indecent assault has been remanded in custody. He is alleged to have shown pornographic material to his 6-year-old niece and fondled her. Lawyer Eroni Maopa requested bail on the grounds that the accused is the sole breadwinner and has two children. The youngest is only a month old. The farmer has been told to produce two sureties and a temporary relocation point. The Nandi Magistrates Court will hear his application for bail on Wednesday.
The high cost of setting up business is seen as one of the obstacles in boosting the economy in the Northern Division. Shanal Sivan spoke to economist Dr. Mahendra Reddy, who says despite the government's efforts, there are still problems that discourage investors. Waste. Dr. Reddy has been studying the Northern economy for some time. According to him, the region remains financially and economically sluggish because costs deter new investors. Employment is a major issue uh, and to have employment there, uh, you need uh, an economy growing at a rapid rate. And because uh, of lack of employment opportunities, people are leaving the Northern Division. <clears throat> and this is uh, creating a lot of problem. A problem in Northern Division is that you know, the place is emptying out gradually. Improved infrastructure will bring about much confidence for investors and many are looking forward to the completion of the upgrade of the Nambawalu Highway. Attract investment <coughs> in the region and these businesses as they, as they grow they'll provide increasing um, a number of employment and this will not only you know, raise income and, uh, of the existing households but also uh, provide incentive for people to stay there or incentive to those students who are studying here to go back. Dr. Reddy believes the unavailability of electricity in many parts of Vanuatu is also holding back the economy. In this day and age, uh, IT plays a very important role in, in business functioning. But if you don't have electricity uh, or cheaper sources of electricity, then it will be, it'll become very difficult for firms to um, uh, base their business on IT infrastructure. Existing businesses and new investors have been encouraged to take advantage of tax-free zones in the Northern Division. Shanal Shivan, FBC News. There will soon be a new code of conduct for real estate agents. Real Estate Licensing Board Chief Executive Ravinesh Murti says it should be ready in the next three months. Shireen Lata reports. The code of conduct is seen as being necessary because some agents aren't following procedures while dealing with clients. Uh, improve the uh, level of uh, professionalism in the uh, real estate industry. Uh, like uh, it will uh, make uh, real estate agents more to act in more diplomatic and uh, ethical manner. While illegal operators remain a concern, there has been a drop in cases this year. The only case Real B is currently investigating is an agency in Savu Savu. Murthy says people are taking heed of their advice. They know that they have to deal with licensed real estate agents and plus like uh, even FIRCA, FICAC, solicitors, stakeholders such as valuers are also uh, only dealing with uh, licensed real estate agents. Eight provisional licenses were issued this year. We normally do uh, daily inspection of the real estate agents and uh, even uh, we actually monitor the activities through the newspaper advertisements and uh, at times we get, uh, receive complaints and feedbacks from the public as well. There are 89 licensed real estate agents in Fiji. Shahin Lata, FBC News. Four people from Momi have been put under curfew while being granted bail by the Nandi Magistrates Court this afternoon. Kitione Mongili, Solomone Vatonga, Navita Lai Sinito and Elisa Momo have been ordered to remain in their homes between 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. daily. They have been charged with damaging property and common nuisance. The magistrate has ordered the four to report to the Nawai police post every Friday. Last Wednesday, the villagers allegedly cut the ropes of Cloud 9, a restaurant and bayat Navula Reef near Momi, which resulted in it drifting out to sea. They will reappear in court on October 31st. The 25th Conference of the Pan-Pacific and Southeast Asia Women's Association got underway in Lamy today. Delegates from the 13 countries will be addressing issues affecting women, the environment and the maintenance of peace. Vasita Kotewasawasa reports. These women will be dealing with a whole range of issues from their own countries and how to address those challenges. The president of the International Women's Organization says everyone has a role to play. The heart and soul of Pasiwa is the individual members who through their work and that of their local chapters continue to further the cause of peace, peace by fostering friendship. Minister for Women Dr. Chico Luveni has highlighted the need for collective discussion so that the region moves forward as one. We do it for our children, for our children's children. It's for future generations. We owe it to them 
to do our part as mothers and grandmothers. FBC News spoke to the head of the Tongan delegation, Lady Tuna Fila Kepa, who pointed out that women are now neglecting their role due to their many commitments. I feel that there are too many commitments that the women um, has opted to it. Uh, not only work because they need the income, but also um, the church commitment, the village commitment. According to Dr. Pratiwi Sudarmono of Indonesia, women already play a pivotal role in nation building. Uh, but the challenge is of course uh, to improve their prosperity, to improve their education and of course to improve their role in our national development. The Women's Conference will end on Friday. Masita Kote Masawasa, FBC News. About 15 young men from Koro Island today displayed what they learned through life skill training. These unemployed youths are now able to make use of simple things around them to make artifacts. They are part of the Lomai Viti Rovers who were recently in Savo Savo to learn these skills. Assistant District Commissioner of the Lomai Viti Rovers, Apisolome Namoli, says with these new set of skills, these young men will be an asset to their villages. The students will benefit, uh, these are just samples, so when they move out to their own districts, they can be able to create more. Uh, they can uh, use this in their daily activities uh, in the villages. It's a good outreach for them and also they will help them to boost other districts in Koro. The Rovers age between 18 to 25. And we welcome Jamie now with all the sports. Thank you, Jackie. Good evening. Coming up tonight, Sprint King Banube Tamaka Odoro to lead a young team to the mini games. And national soccer reps still to keep up with training despite the soccer season taking a break. Stay with us. Bula, I'm Wame. Join me every weekday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on The Center Show with classic hits from the 70s as well as the 80s right here on Gold FM. Welcome back to FBC Sports. At the age of 21, Fiji's Sprint King Banube Tambakau Doro will be considered a veteran in the National Athletic Squad to the Pacific Mini Games in Wallace and Futuna. He knows that with the younger athletes looking up to him for guidance, his hands will be quite full when he begins competition next week. Shelvin Chand has more. Banube has just returned from the World Championships where he did his season's best time. I was really good, you know, going against those uh, big runners, you know, he really keeps you interested in the sport. So. I'm looking forward to the next World Championship, and, uh, but first things first, we've got the mini games coming up, so I'm turning my attention there. Banuve will be competing in three events at the mini games, the 100, the 200 and the 4x1. I will reach the 10.53 in the 100, so that's my season's best. So yeah, that's definitely what I'm trying to do right now, you know, just trying to improve the times and, you know, run faster at the mini games. While the sprinter is focused with the tracks, being a Fijian means that he hasn't ruled out the possibility of picking up the oval ball. Uh, well, that, that was a plan later on, but, uh, you know, everybody's interested in rugby, every Fijian boy's interested in rugby, so, you know, it's, that's not a bad idea, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be looking there in the future, but uh, first things first, you know, just complete what I have to do now, and uh, we'll see what we'll do later. Banuve's season best is 10.53 seconds, while the Pacific record over 100 metres is 10.34 seconds, set by the now national coach, Chonin Delai. Athletics Fiji is keeping their fingers crossed that the student is able to beat the master at the mini games. Shelvin Chan, FBC Sports. A huge task lies ahead for Team Fiji to the Pacific mini games as they go in as probably one of the smallest ever. For the past four mini games, Fiji has been the biggest achiever with the largest medal haul. And with the team departing this Saturday, they bear this in mind despite not competing in smaller team sports like men's volleyball. 
well in the last uh, in the previous mini games in the last four I think previous mini games Fiji has been topping the top uh, in the medal tally and we hope uh, to do likewise the national football squad has been reminded to continue training hard in the off-season. The squad, which is named after the BOG, will soon start preparing to tour the region and Asia. However, with the season on a break, the players need to maintain their fitness. Interesting with more. A break is what most players need after a hectic season so far. However, at the same time, those selected in the national training squad have been reminded of what is needed by them. Once in the Premier League, now they have been with us through the under-20s, under-17s and Olympic. They know exactly how we're working and what is required when they come here. And they know if they're coming unfit, and there will be very small chance to continue in, in the squad and they need to go home. It's simple like that. The, 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 the discipline and, and the, the commitment, they need to be 100% now. It's not like in the past. Already the cream of talent picked includes youngsters as Buzetti looks at the future. There are a number of tours and tournaments which Fiji will be involved in over the next two years in different age groups. But now we are on the right track. Everything is alright for the under-20, we are alright for the next under-17, um, the developer uh, uh, under-13 under and under-15 will come in and play the next month. Uh, the girls under-16, first time in the history, we have 600 girls. So everything go on the right track. But when it comes to national things, it's a different history. You know, you're talking about quality, you're talking about different level, different standard of football. Already the naming of under-17 skipper Josef Overvo in the senior squad shows the path being taken. This could be the beginning of taking Fiji back to the pinnacle of the sport in the region. Interesting, FBC Sports. The Fiji under-21 netball side has lost its third game at the World Youth Championships, going down 71-32 to Australia this morning. Skipper Raitse Lindabeuo played an impressive game and was the standout. Fiji coach Una Rakura says she was over the moon for her players as they contested from the first quarter right to the end and did far better than the doubters had predicted. Fiji's last match is against Israel tomorrow morning. The Takas Ice Cream Secondary Schools competition is underway in Suva. This year's tournament has attracted 62 teams, the biggest number in its history. As Sal and Daudakadaka finds out, it has been a long and fulfilling journey for the schools competing for the first time. The first round of games showed great promise of what was to come in this year's Takas Secondary Schools basketball competition. For the newcomers, the tournament was a step up from their usual contest. It's a different atmosphere from the games that we play back in London. Right? Yeah, it's more uh, lively. Yeah. For some, it was not only about school pride, but also a chance to test their mettle against quality opposition. It's kind of challenging for all of us, so it's going to be fun at the same time. Eh? The competition ends with the finals on Thursday. Reigning champions Andy Vakumbau and Maris Brothers got their title defense off to a good start with victories today but there can be no assurance of what's in store for them later in the week. Tsalendo Vakavaka, FBC Sports. That was your sports for tonight. It's back to Jackie now for business. <laughs>
The government says having only one constituency will ensure that every Fijian gets equal attention by elected leaders and LTA to introduce new policies for public service vehicle drivers. Results from last week's opinion poll and we asked, do you see new faces shaping Fiji's political scene? 58% of respondents said yes. The question this week and we're asking, do you agree with Fiji FA's decision to allow Fijians only to play in events? Remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. That's news tonight. I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, good night. I wake up in the morning. I prefer to go down to the gym, get a bit of physical work done. Also, later on in the day, I decide to go through for meditation. I do a bit of reading to find out what the latest songs are. A bit of research. And for me, it's all about the listeners. Hey, what's up? I'm Rio, and this is the Traffic Jam every weekday from 3 o'clock to 7, only on Today FM. Today is hit music. What's up? Oh, I'm going to go to the next Nimbula, why are you Mr. Ben? And Lapa! Now, Maggie Kiram and all the kids are doing a morning chicken of a rumbuka and a bull FM. Now, we're doing a silly.